Now we want to do the filter by departments. And in order to do that, we need to have the list of departments in this drop down. Right now we have the numbers 1, 2, 3 that comes by default when we insert a drop down in the app. If we select the drop down that we already named DRP department, we can see here in the items property of this drop down that we have this drop down sample object. This is a list of numbers that has the 1, 2, and 3. In this case, we want to have a list of the departments that the users are. If we look in our data set, that's this Excel file in the second tab, we can see this list of departments right here. One way that we could have this list inside the app is just by having an object here that has the list of departments. So instead of having drop down sample, I can delete, open a square bracket, and then put the options inside here as if they are a text. So in order to put texts, I need to use double quotes. So I'm going to open double quotes and type, for example, HR. Then I close the double quotes, add a comma. Now open another, another double quotes and add the second department, which is sales. So I'll put sales here, sales. And then let's say another one that's marketing and so on. I'm not going to add all of them because we are going to do differently later. So let's just close the brackets. And now we can see that here in the drop down, we already are able to see the department list that we just put in there. But usually I don't like this approach of have things hard coded inside the app, because what if in the future there is a new department in the company? Then someone would have to open that, edit and publish the new version. Instead of putting here, hard coded, as we say, we can get from the Excel spreadsheets. One way would be from the very same table, getting the department columns and getting the distinct values. But, oops, but imagine also that in the future we have a lot of registers and the new department is in the row that, that's after the delegation limit, as we talked before in a previous class, then that department wouldn't appear in the app. So ideally, what I like to do is to have a second table that has a list of departments, only the unique values. And this is what we are going to do right now. I'm going to create a second tab here in this spreadsheet and create a new table with the list of departments. The header will be called department name, and then we'll have the distinct values here. I'm going to get from the first table. So development, sales, marketing, IT, HR, finance and sales. Here we have all the uniques. So I'm going to copy and paste in there. And now I'm going to transform this in a table by selecting everything and formatting as a table. As we just saw in the beginning of the course, how to format as a table. So Power Apps can access this information. Let's select any style. I'm, get, I'm going to get the second one, light blue. I'm going to keep it checked, the one that says that my table has headers, because it has. The first one is the header calls department name. And let's click on OK. This will become a table. And now let's just rename this table to have a meaningful name here on table design. I selected the table design tab. And instead of table two, I will call, let's see how we call the first table, just for reference. It's called TB underscore contacts. So I'm going to call TB underscore departments, TB underscore departments without an S. Okay. Now I can close this file and try to access this table from Power Apps. Here in the data tab, let's click on add data and search for date, uh, OneDrive. In my case, it's OneDrive for business. I don't know how you create it. There is also the OneDrive, the personal one, but in my case, it's the OneDrive for business. I just select one of the connections that I have created and I need to search the file. In my case, it's on course files. 
and my file is right here. Let me click on it and then select the table that's TB underscore department. Once I select, I can click on connect. The table will appear here and I can use this table in the drop down. So I'm going to click here in the drop down and instead of having this hard coded array, I'm going to put TB department. So I just started typing TB and it shows the option here to select. I'm going to click on it. It will bring the table with all the departments in the drop down. Since the header name has a space between the words department and name, we get this special character here that's not very pleasing and not easy to remember. So that's why sometimes, most of the times, I like to use the header without the spacing. So if it's a composed column name, I just don't put the space because it's difficult to remember this. Since we are in the beginning of this part of the development, we still have time to go back and fix. If we continue doing like this, it will be harder in the future because this name will be used somewhere in the app and we would have to do a lot of changes. Let me reopen the spreadsheet and fix that. We can see that Power Apps added this ID column here just to identify the values. And what we are going to do is to remove this space between the two words in the department name. Okay, so I just removed. I'm going to close. Let's now refresh the TB departments to see if it will already change for us. Okay, so let's see. Click in these dots and refresh. Okay, now let's click here to see what happens. Maybe it's, it still didn't recognize the name. The change. Yes, now we have the new name for the column, the part name, department's name without that special text in the middle. Looks better and easier to remember. Okay, we can see that we have the entire list of departments. And in the case that a new department is added in the table, it will reflect in here easier, huh? Okay. Now we need to use these departments to filter the users by department. If I select, for example, marketing, I want to show only the users that are from the marketing area. But I cannot tell by looking here because we don't have that information in the gallery. So we are going to add this information in the gallery in order to visualize if the filter is working or, or not when we implement the filter. Let's do that. Let's exit the play mode. And here I'm going to insert a new label that is going to show the department of the selected user, of the user that's in that row. So I'm going to go to insert, classic, and I will select a text label. This will add a label and I will position here in the right, aligned with the username. Let me just resize a little. Decrease the font size, let's say 14. Okay, and I don't want to show the comment as it's just inserted here for me, but I want to remove that and put dot department. That will show the department of the selected user. So I'm going to align to the right, and now I can see what's the user department. And when I filter here, I can verify if it's working correctly. Very good. We have added the department lists. And in the next video, we are going to learn how to do this filter. Get a drop down and filter a gallery from this drop down. See you in the next class. If this video was useful to you, please let me know in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe because that will help you be notified when a new video is launched in the channel. Other than that, I will leave you with a next video to watch. Bye-bye.